All right, it's 10.30 right now, so I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. So can everyone hear me all right? All right, that's good, because I sung karaoke a couple days ago, and I almost blew out my voice, so that's good. We're in it. So I, fran I, sang, sang, I sang some Frank Sinatra, actually, some, some of the classics. Yeah, but um, at any rate, hello, everybody. My name is Rob Maldonado, so a little bit about me. I've been using SOLIDWORKS since version 2015, and at that point, I was in college. Uh, when I started using SOLIDWORKS, I became so enamored with the things that it can do that I put it upon myself to be the best user I could be, and I did that using SOLIDWORKS certifications to lead me through. And of course, I'll be elaborating on all of this um, you know, throughout the presentation, but uh, nowadays, I work for a SOLIDWORKS reseller. I work for DesignPoint. Uh, which is headquartered in New Jersey, but, and we serve customers in the uh, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania tri-state area. So um, kinds of things I do, I run SOLIDWORKS training classes. So if you want to uh, go to a SOLIDWORKS reseller and host an official class, you know, I teach those. Um, I also do SOLIDWORKS tech support. And so my presentation is going to be a little bit unusual to say the least. So in a regular presentation, you would have a clicker. Sometimes you would go up to the computer, press a button to advance a slide. I have this. I have a game controller. And what do you use game controllers for? To play some games. So I bet you didn't know you were signing up for this. When you came to the certification game, this is the certification game. It's an adventure game, and you guys are gonna help me beat it. So if all should be working here, I should be able to move my little, uh, my little uh, SOLIDWORKS Tetris Pete part dude. Look at, look at him, he's just happy to be here. And I should be able to jump, you know, for example, I can collect that coin, get ready for the certification game, A. All right, so I'm gonna go get that coin to advance to the next slide. All right, so first thing, why, why bother, right? Why do we wanna get certified? Well, there's a couple of reasons, and uh, depending on who you are and what you care about, you, you might hold uh, some of these to different levels of, of importance. But uh, I think all of these are very valid reasons. So um, the first thing, of course, it's gonna help with employment. So, uh, there's plenty of people looking for SOLIDWORKS talent, and they want a quick way to verify that you're able to not only know how to use all the tools, but you know how to do so quickly. Um, having a certification on your resume um, can you know, very much guarantee you an interview. It'll get you to the top of the stack because it's so much more compelling than saying, I have SOLIDWORKS experience. And sometimes it can do even more than that. So I'll tell you a little story here. So be me, in, back in college, 2015, was a nervous sophomore looking for a co-op position. I went all the way to Indiana to interview at a um, heavy machine design company. And I broke so many rules. I, that interview was botched to every extent of the word. I go in there, you know, suit and tie, looking good. Within five minutes, the interviewer meets with me. First question, what do we do here? And me, being a little bit less savvy than now, was like, honesty is always the best policy. I told them I didn't know. <laughs> so at this point, the interview should have been, you know, it's, it's, it's over now. <laughs> But you know, I guess they could just keep going, going with it, you know, just to just to, so they don't have to like send me back like immediately, right? You know, the guy was looking through my resume. You know how they do so quietly it makes you all nervous and stuff like that. Looks just kind of nods to himself a little bit. All right, so that's fine. I keep going through the interview. He's asking me some basic engineering questions and stuff like that. I answer them to the best of my abilities, and I go home. A week later. I got a call. They offered me the position. 
And uh, my mind was so blown because, you know, at that time, I was like uh, in that mentality of honesty, the best policy. I did the right thing, except, though, that was not the right thing. And uh, when I told this story to my college advisor, her mind was blown, too. She's like, you should not have this offer right now. You know, that is a basic prerequisite of what you should do <laughs> before going to an interview. So, yeah, if you have any any uh, you know, college kids at home, please tell them whenever you interview, research the company. That, that is basic, but anyway, I digress. You know, so I actually worked for them for six months, and towards the end of my co-op, I asked my mentor, you know, with the retrospect that I did so terrible. So I was like, why did you offer me a position after that horrific performance? <laughs> and he told me, it was because I was SOLIDWORKS certified. You see, they had, a, they had a problem. They had a ton of legacy data. And you're probably thinking, oh, like AutoCAD, right? Or, no, they had physical drawings, you know, the drawings that you actually sat down on the drafting board and you drew out by hand from the 60s and 70s. They had rooms filled with them and they needed them to be converted into SOLIDWORKS. I was certified SOLIDWORKS professional certified at that time. So not, not, I not only proved that I am very fast at modeling, but I can also do it the correct way. Make the models readable so any other, other engineer can pick them up and use them. And so that, you know, that's my little anecdote. Your mileage may vary, but it definitely helps. So, number two. You, get in, you can get into this thing called the certification directory. So when you pass a certification, you have the option to be listed in the uh, publicly available certification directory, which is um, a database where you can go and not only search someone's name and see what certifications they have, but it, the search also works in reverse too. So you could see, um, you, could say, you could say, oh, I'm looking for a certified SOLIDWORKS expert in New Jersey. And that database will list all the SOLIDWORKS experts in New Jersey. What's also very cool is that in this, in this uh, directory, you can also link straight into your LinkedIn profile. So if someone does want to reach out to you, that is an option. You know, that leaves yourself open to opportunities. So this is optional, of course. You know, if you, um, are, you, know, if you want that extra privacy, you can you know, decline being listed in the certification directory. Me, personally, I'm there. I'm on the directory right now and, you know, connected with some people on LinkedIn through that. All right, so, SOLIDWORKS World, how many has been to the Partner Pavilion yet? A lot of cool stuff there, right? So, anyone who's SOLIDWORKS certified, they know are the influencers of our community. We hold the power. And actually, so, something that I, I ended up doing right now, I put in an offer for a 3D printer. You know, I offered them like $1,000 less than what they were asking for. I actually got a text just before the, um, just before my, the, the session started that they accepted my offer, actually. It's like, I'm a SOLIDWORKS expert. What do you got for me? Just ask. The worst they can do is say no. So, another good reason. All right, so I mean, this ties into num number one a little bit, but um, industry standard. This goes uh, the other way for employers. If you ha own a company and you want to assemble a team of engineers who know that will work um, as efficiently as possible and will model in such a way that, you know, if they have to pull models, you know, a couple of years from now, they don't have to say, wait, why do they do it that way? I don't get what's going on here. Being SOLIDWORKS certified means that not only can you model the part, you know how to do it correctly. You know how to do it in a readable way. You know how to do it in a robust way. So you change things and the model doesn't you know, implode or something like that. Give you another, I'll give you another story. So um, I graduated from college from Case Western Reserve over in Cleveland. That was back in 2017. Um, anyone who's a recent graduate, graduate will know how grueling the job market is. It's terrible. Entry-level position, minimum 10 years experience, right? That kind of thing. So, 
Consider this, what sounds better? Me coming out of college. Hi, Mr. Employer. I have one year professional experience and three years of SOLIDWORKS experience. Or, I have the highest level customer certification available to all SOLIDWORKS users. I can make SOLIDWORKS dance if you want it to. I can model anything you want. And this test shows that. Less than 0.1% less than of the populace has this. Much more compelling argument, right? So using certifications, you can actually, um, you can actually punch above your weight class in terms of uh, experience because if you can produce the results, why not have you on board, right? And that leads into number five. So, you know, that company that I said that to was the company I'm working for right now, Design Point. I told them I could make SOLIDWORKS do whatever I want. And I proved it to them. So I went to the interview and I showed that I can basically bring SOLIDWORKS to its knees if, it, if I wanted to. I was a certified SOLIDWORKS expert before I left college. And something like that is very, very powerful. I set out in 2015 that I wanted to be the best SOLIDWORKS user I can be. What a broad goal that is, isn't it? Using the certification track, you can break these down into a bunch of more manageable goal, goals. So instead of just learning every uh, feature under the sun, because heaven knows there's a lot of them, right? Use the certifications as little checkpoints and going through that, through that track, you will be some of, the, some of the best users you've ever been. It's great stuff. So yeah, lots of great reasons to get certified. All right, so um, let's continue here. So we gotta understand what we're up against. So I got a little pit, so I'm going to not fall in that, hooray. So what, Sol what uh, SOLIDWORKS exams do we have available to us? Looks like I got another coin there, but I can't quite reach it. Well, I guess I'll just uh, present this slide and maybe we'll deal with that later. So the SOLIDWORKS exams come in many different varieties, many different concentrations. You can, there's, um, there's certifications on simulation, on product data management, on uh, additive manufacturing. But and for this session, we're gonna be focusing on mechanical CAD, just the, the, the basic ones here. So the first level you can achieve is the Certified SOLIDWORKS Associate Exam. And this is the exam that is com commonly given out to schools, pretty much, to, to colleges and things like that. It comes in two different flavors. You know, you have your regular um, associate and then your academic version. What is the difference? Well, actually, the tests are exactly identical. The only difference is that the academic exam is administered after a semester of SOLIDWORKS training led by an instructor at a university. So um, if you're a working professional and you just hop straight into the, uh, this exam, you know, you'll just get the CSWA. If you're in college right now or you have some, know someone that's in college, tell him or her to ask their uh, CAD instructor. They, they offer that exam for free most of the time. So if it's there available to them, tell them to take advantage of that. So it's more of the basic stuff, you know, very basic part modeling. Can you read a can you read an engineering drawing? And it's to the point where it's like, what kind of view is this? Hey, that's a section view. Doink. And then you just you kind of keep going. So that's good and all, but let's talk about the next thing here. The professional level exams. And actually, pretty recently, this got an academic uh, version to it as well. But the professional um, is, you know, one step uh, higher in terms of difficulty and um, just be uh, make, uh, differentiating yourself. So um, as we'll discuss a little bit later, this exam comes in three segments. They make the part modeling much more difficult than in the, in the A version. You know, you'll play around with configurations, and, and be tested on how to do assemblies. So my recommendation, if you're a working professional right now or have taken training with a SOLIDWORKS reseller and you're comfortable with the essentials and the advanced part modeling, just go straight for the professional level. So um, fun fact, the associate is not a prerequisite for the, pro for the professional. If you feel very strong in your skills, 
you can hop straight into there. And if you feel that way, I highly recommend you do so. So after you, you get the professional, what's next? What's next, what's next, what's next? All right, we have our specialist exams. And this is where you start to uh, really play around with the tools that are available in, even, in, in just st SOLIDWORKS <laughs> standard. You know, the nice thing about SOLIDWORKS standard comes with a lot of stuff, you know, right out of the box before even any add-ins. So there's five main ones for the, uh, uh, for the CAD track, but there's also um, a professional version of simulation, but that's beyond this right now. But yeah, sheet metal, weldments, mold making, surfacing, and drawing tools. So basically, instead of the features tab that you would be living in for the professional level, just switch it out for whatever tab in SOLIDWORKS, and you can take that exam. So, you know, if, you, if you're in a sheet metal company and you want to um, really bring your skills to the next level, you know, a good path, get the professional, and then specialize in sheet metal. So that's good, and a lot of, a lot of people stop there, and that's, and that's great. But for me, I wanted more out of myself. I wanted to be the best SOLIDWORKS user I can be, remember? So, if you, even if you get four out of five of these exams, you'll be a pretty well-rounded user already. You know, think about it, that's a lot of stuff there. But do you know what else, what else you can do with four out of five of these exams? You can be eligible for the expert level exam. So this exam it was really the culmination of a near perfect understanding of the software. You know, if you go to the SOLIDWORKS site, it reads that a CSWE is able to solve any modeling challenge given to them, and it's typically the go-to users among their colleagues. Be pretty nice to be described that way, right? You know, that, that is what I set my sights on back when I was in college. And, yeah, the test is grueling. It is four hours long. And it, it really just pushes the limits of what you know. A lot of people will say that it's easy. You know, I, I, I've met a couple people who think that. Anyone who says that and, you know, seriously means it are, are not considering the hundreds, if not thousands of hours they've been investing doing all the other stuff before they're even eligible for, for the expert. When you get to that point, you are practically the, one of the best user in your life. And the expert is just there to, uh, to prove that, pretty much. So, so uh, what kind of pool will you get into if you get one of these certifications? So um, last I checked, um, globally, there are about 3 million SOLIDWORKS users, give or take. A lot of people, a lot of seats. If you get the associate level exam, you will fall into a pool of 270,000 people worldwide. So already that brings it down to like 10%, getting, just by get, having any certification. The professional level of any, of any kind, you're looking at a pool of about 90,000 people. So slash that down to a third. The expert level, only about 3,000 in the world right now. So you're talking about 0.1%, right? Very, very, very high accolade for, uh, for anyone to get, but that doesn't stop there. So expert level exams, most of them are SOLIDWORKS resellers, about two thirds in fact. So if you are a end user and you're able to get the uh, certified expert, you will join only 1,000 other people in the world with that certification as a user. You see, we were trying to get away from saying, I have SOLIDWORKS experience, and instead saying, I am as capable as 0.1% of the population. I can model anything. Try me. See how powerful that is? But yeah, those are the basic ones you can get for um, the mechanical track, at least. And that's all, about, all, all I needed to say here, but what about that coin? So let's see. Hey, I can jump on these things. So let me go get that. And we'll talk about some of the frequently asked questions when it comes to taking an exam. So 
do we need internet? Short answer, yes. Um, you can take the SOLIDWORKS exams anywhere you want. So it could be at home, it could be at a library, it could be at work. It is an internet-based proctor. So that is uh, one of the only requirements that you need technically to run a SOLIDWORKS exam. It, if you don't have internet, you need to find somewhere that does. That's just the long and the short of it. So, and you kind of need to head up there. So let's just turn on the internet. Hey, look, a button. I'm sure that's how they did in the 80s, right? There we go. Hey, internet's on. Drop off here. All right. Good. So what happens if I take an exam and I don't do so well? What, what if I fail? So remember, we're gamers. So. No one ever dies in games. Gamers don't die. We just respawn, right? Just take it again. So every exam, you can technically take unlimited times. So what is there stopping you from just taking it over and over and over again until you pass? Well, there's a cooldown period for each one of the exams. If you attempt the uh, certified associate or certified professional and you fail it, you must wait 30 days before you can try it again. If you take um, the advanced certification, so like sheet metal, weldments, et cetera, and fail that, I believe the waiting period is two weeks there, so it's a little more lenient. The certified expert, on the other hand, you should really wait till you're ready and you really understand, uh, you, you feel that you're very strong with SOLIDWORKS, because if you fail the expert, you have to wait 90 days. And actually, this is um, all the way down from 180 days. So they just changed this you know, pretty recently in the past couple months. So imagine failing the expert and then having to wait, wait six months before being able to try it again. That is a big old slice of humble pie if I ever saw it, right? So yeah, just take it again. So can I pause the exam? All right, you can see we have a little pause button there. So let's see if I can go ahead and click it. Oops, oh, it's dead. All right, so no pause button on the exam. So the exam is timed because it's not only testing whether you uh, know how to model the, model the part, but can you do so quickly? That's the important bit. That's what the employers want to know. So no, make sure that you're, that you're all ready to go. You know, have your bathroom break or whatever you need and do that beforehand because there is no pausing the exam. So another pit here, so let me make sure I don't join the button there. All right, so um, down to the more, I guess, serious stuff. So um, what happens if my internet fails? Yell at Comcast. Well, I mean, in, 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 in seriousness. Um, if your internet goes down, the tester client will try to reconnect to the internet for two minutes. If it finds that connection again, then the test will resume, we're, we're all good. If you are unable to find that connection within two minutes, the tester closes down and submits all the answers. And the thing is, that's, I mean, that's kind of how, how they enforce um, you know, the on honesty with that. So um, if you have really inconsistent internet going down for minutes at a time, I would either you know, get that fixed through your ISP or, or something else, hardwire your connection, or you know, go to a different venue, a library or something that has consistent internet. That's gonna be really important here. So what if SOLIDWORKS crashes? Well, actually, that's an easy fix because, um, so I bet you didn't know this. If you go to um, options, system options, on the left-hand side, you go to performance, and you're gonna take a little checkbox that says, Enable no crash mode. And there, it's all fixed. Okay, but in, in, all, in all seriousness, um, you know, we're, we're CAD guys. You know, remember to save often. Save after every question, and there's gonna be more benefits to that. I'll tell you that in a second. So for the every once in a while crash, you know, if SOLIDWORKS crashes, hopefully, hopefully you've been saving a lot up to that point. Just start it back up, take a deep breath, go back in, no big deal. What if SOLIDWORKS is crashing very often? Like if you draw every other line and it's crashing. Okay, so clearly that is an installation issue or there's something that is you know, killing SOLIDWORKS, maybe a graphics card issue or something like that. At that point, you need to be proactive and manage your SOLIDWORKS installation. Um, it's my opinion that 
part of being SOLIDWORKS certified is knowing how to manage your SOLIDWORKS installation. So um, do, do whatever it takes to be uh, proactive. Get on the forums. Call your SOLIDWORKS reseller. You pay them to help you with this stuff. And you know, if you're wondering a little bit more about um, you know, what else you can do, there's actually another uh, session happening by uh, Rachel Diane York, the person actually let me present here. You know, she's, is, she's giving tips about SOLIDWORKS tech support for the average user. So you might want to uh, check that out. You know, she'll give you a lot, of great a lot of great tips. So other than that, what if my computer crashes? So as soon as your computer blue screens or something like that, it's going to submit all the answers. So of course, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to uh, take a test on an unstable system that is crashing you know, once per day or something like that. So, that, so those are all the components. You know, this is, this is a kind of you know, hard question to answer, but you know, just make sure that's in check. There are things that you can do to either you know, fix your system or you know, uh, take it out another venue. But if you're experiencing this in, any, in, uh, in frequent, pretty much, do not take the SOLIDWORKS certified exam until you've rectified those. All right, uh, up next. So how do we buy a SOLIDWORKS, uh, a credit for a SOLIDWORKS certified exam? Well, all you got to do is walk down to your local uh, buy store. It's got all these dollar signs on it. Every town has these. So you just kind of go in and, oh, OK. Um, I think I'm in the wrong game. So is that, that's Toad, huh? You've changed, you've changed your, uh, your career track, I see. Instead of uh, mushrooms, you've given, you're giving me some exam credits. So I'm just going to get that and get on out of here. But, OK, but in, in all seriousness, who here is on SOLIDWORKS subscription for their licenses? OK, a couple of us here. Um, did you know that for every seat of SOLIDWORKS you have on subscription, you get two free exam credits per year? If, if you want to know more, you know, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a little more here, but if, if you want to go uh, really deep into it, you can actually Google search that, you know, uh, SOLIDWORKS certification, SOLIDWORKS uh, subscription, and it'll take you to a page where you can actually go follow some instructions. It'll text, text you an exam code, and you can take it for free. You know, one, uh, basically two attempts per year per license of SOLIDWORKS. So, you know, if you, if you have a whole engineering team with licenses of SOLIDWORKS on subscription, you could potentially get a lot of those guys certified. So that's something to look into, definitely. But definitely, when I was a, um, do, you have, do you have a question? Just per attempt, so like, is it, if you fail it, you get to pay again, the or, or one of those, or you that, That's a good question. So um, he was asking, so it's, uh, is it per attempt, pretty much? And the answer is, is yes. So it's, it's one credit. So either you pass it or fail it, but whatever the outcome, the credit is used up. But um, so one option that you can do is wait six months again, uh, get the other exam credit, and then try again. But the other exam, uh, the, the, excuse me, the other option, and this goes for people who are not on subscription or you know, people like me who are you know, just a student, didn't have anything on subscription, um, you can actually buy them a la carte as well. So if you go to the SOLIDWORKS certification catalog, this is a good comprehensive resource that you can Look at every exam and see um, what exactly it, excuse me, and see exactly what you know, topics you need. But if you go to the right-hand side, you can buy that exam um, you know, just by itself. So the prices range from $20, you know, $19.95 for the um, advanced exams, then goes to $99 for either the associate or the professional. So yeah, the associate and the professional level are the same price. So you know, if you're ready for it, just go for the professional. So that's another reason. But anyway, and the most expensive exam offered currently is the expert. CSWE costs $150 per attempt. Again, don't take it unless you're ready. Because if, if, you, if you fail that attempt, you're going to have to get another credit. Um, uh, I guess another thing I should mention also, the... Uh, the credits you get on subscription are only for the professional or the associate. Uh, SOLIDWORKS Corp, unfortunately, does not give away the expert uh, credits through, the, through subscription. But pretty much ev everything else, you know, you can get through those exam credits, which is pretty nice. Uh, but anyway, 
Let's go into this building here. Okay, so it looks like number six is a little cut off there, but can you research during the exam? Yes, a lot of people don't know this. The exam is open book. So if, you, if you've taken training at a SOLIDWORKS reseller, they will give you a training manual. You can have that on your desk while you take the exam. You can open Google and you can Google search some stuff. You know, if you're taking the, um, taking the professional and you need to know how to make a coordinate system, just Google it. How do I make a coordinate system? And here are the specific clicks to make it appear. The thing is, if you're researching every single question, remember the exam is timed and you're not going to finish. So that's kind of what, uh, kind of what the check is. If you're, if you're researching every little thing, you're not gonna make it. And the other thing is, um, you should thoroughly look at the topics for each exam that you're about to try because there's a difference between asking, how do I make a coordinate system versus how do I use multibodies? You know, I can make an entire other presentation on multibodies probably. So, you know, that is just too broad and you're not going to get the concept of multibodies if you don't know what they are during a timed exam. It's just not going to work out for you. So you can research, but it's going to be like little things here and there that, you know, you don't know exactly the picks and clicks, but just to, you know, get you on your way. But lastly here, um, can we discuss results? And the answer is yes, absolutely. You should discuss results. If you take an exam and you fail it, you should find a mentor that works with that particular set of tools you know, all the time so they can coach you on how to get better. You know, review, the, review the parts together and see where you went wrong. That's, that's the path of growth, pretty much. You know, we've all been there. But what, this, what, what we can't do is, uh, you know, can I record my screen and then post my exam on YouTube? No, bad, don't do that. <laughs> so um, in all seriousness, you know, if they find out that, that you're just giving away, you know, uh, exam information to the, to the public like that, they can not only revoke the certification that you've passed, uh, but um, they can actually ban you from taking future ones as well. So just don't do it. You know, you, you, you can share uh, within, uh, you know, within closed spaces, but don't, you know, post it publicly or anything like that. Just be smart about it. But yeah, now definitely we want to um, utilize all the resources that are available to us to learn as much as we can. So if I, so mysolidworks.com is a great resource. They actually have specific certification tracks. If you have mysolidworks professional, they have specific tracks. Like this is the CSWA track. This is a CSWP sheet metal track. So that could be something if you want to, you know, a more structured approach. That works, works out pretty well. SolidWorks tech blog. You can see um, showing my blog of how I model a scootoid. Remember that shape that everyone got excited about? I was like, oh, did we discover a new shape? Yeah, I ended up modeling that and I threw that on there. But, you know, you just look through the SolidWorks tech blog and you find a lot of unique stuff in there that, you know, help you just become a better user. Not only that, but on the SOLIDWORKS tech blog, if you go there and you search part reviewer, they actually post entire parts that uh, not only can you roll back, but they all have comments on them. And they show you their design process in order to create a particular part. It's really cool. So instead of you know, just doing random examples, you can actually find an example of, let's say, let's say like a 20-sided dice. You look at that and like, oh, I'm like, I have no clue how I would go about doing that. Well, you can go download this part, roll it back, see the comments, and you know, learn from their process. I did a lot of my learning that way. It was, I was self-taught you know, throughout college. Super, super helpful. It's all works forums. Lots of things bumping in there. So you know, um, feel free to ask questions or see uh, other forum posts. You can learn you know, quite a bit from there. There's other secondary communities like r slash SOLIDWORKS on Reddit. Although, don't, don't post your exams on there. I'm watching you. <laughs> and, of course, you know, there's other secondary sources like YouTube. So that is my YouTube channel. So if you, if you want to follow me, I'll have my, um, my handle at the very end of the presentation as well. But you can find me at SOLIDWORKS Nerd on YouTube. I know, right? But I also call it uh, Virtual Flat because I like puns like that. So. I just have a bunch of random SOLIDWORKS content on there, a lot of advanced surfacing, 
but I actually have specific videos, you know, about tips and tricks for the certification exam. So you might be able to see there are 12 and a half tips to pass the CSWA. It's currently my most popular vi video at 17,000 views. And actually, um, what blew my mind today is this morning breakfast, I picked a random table, said hi to some people, and he recognized me. He's like, are you the SOLIDWORKS nerd? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, was, I, I was absolutely blown, blown away, and he was like, yeah, thanks to your tips, I was able to pass my exam. Thank you so much. And that, and that was like really gratifying to see, and indeed, I went back to the video, he had commented on it, and he had commented if I was coming to SOLIDWORKS World, and I said yes. But it was so weird, because we did not plan to meet up. All those tables, I sat at one, and I met one of my viewers. So that, that was pretty awesome, just thought I'd, just thought I'd tell you that. But yeah, lots of resources out there. If you need help, go get it. There's many places to choose from. All right, so being prepared not only means mentally prepared, we also have to be stylish, right? So here I, I can change into a couple costumes. So here, okay, um, don't I look so handsome clad in armor like that? Oh, of course, this is Dallas, so why not get a cowboy hat? Or I can concentrate so hard that I grow a, a hairdo, I've changed my, changed my attire. Don't I look powerful in that? Oh, what is this robot one? Okay, so this is pretty cool. So, you may not recognize this robot as of right now, but this is one of the coolest robots you'll know. So, this is a representation of Ekgar. Short for Every Kid Gets a Robot. The project was started by Daniel Boyer, who is sitting in the front row here. She's 18, and she's designed this robot for under $20 to, to deliver it to kids that need it the most. She's also a presenter here at SOLIDWORKS World. She's presenting uh, first slot on Wednesday, I believe 8.30. You know, go check her out. Lots of cool stuff there. You know, she's the one wearing the shirt that says, I thought it, this was a cat conference, and there's like a cat that is 3D modeled on her shirt, so it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yep, and then, or I can have this tutu. So, Someone give me a suggestion. What, what costume am I using here? Tutu. Tutu. I love it. Oh, don't I look so good here. So I'll roll with that. I look so formidable right now. All right, but anyway, you know, let's talk about the certified SOLIDWORKS professional. So there's going to be, uh, I'm going to reserve some time at the very end. So let's see how, how I'm doing here. All right, so far so good. Yeah, 30 minutes. I'm going to actually uh, go over an ex a sample exam with you. And that's going to be indicative of section one of the certified SOLIDWORKS professional. So this is the uh, section that deals with uh, the, the core part modeling. You're going to be dealing with global variables and equations, mass properties, stuff like that. So I'll go through that in a little bit here. So section two, and by the way, can you separate the sections? There's three sections to the CSWP. Do you have to take them all at once? No, you do not. You can actually take section one one day, section two the week after, and section three the week after that if you want. Or if you want to just bang, out, bang them out in just one big old session, that is, your, uh, that is your call. Do it however you like. Yes? Uh, do what? Oh, that's a great question. So I actually have taken the CSWP twice. When I took it back in college, you know, back in 2015, I actually separated it. And that's because to get around my busy uh, uh, college schedule, I could only take one, one bit at a time. So the, the CSWP got updated last year, and me, with my curiosity, I took it again. At that point, I just took it in one big session. So, you know, we're all busy people, so, you know, I think probably the uh, se uh, separating them out is probably the more common thing I see. Though if you want to clear out an entire afternoon and just get it done, that's cool too. I have a question back there. So, is this being done in the classroom setting? Uh, students after finishing section one can take that section of the exam and come back to class? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's right. So, to re repeat his question, you know, he was wondering if you know, as soon as you, uh, if you're taking if you're taking a class, and as soon as you've uh, finished learning a particular um, particular uh, topic, can you take the exam right afterwards? Yeah, you can. And actually, another thing I, I, that reminds me of, this can be taken in any order. So you do not have to go one, two, three. If you feel like going, doing assemblies first, which is section three, you can do that. 
You know, you can shuffle them any way you want. But as soon as you get all three of them, you will be awarded the CSWP. So something I wanted, a quick blurb that I wanted to mention for section two. Um, you may have, uh, I mentioned real, real briefly that the CSWP got updated last year. And one of the updates is that you do not need design tables for configurations. So, it, so uh, for those of you who may not know, design tables require Microsoft Excel. And the certification team realized that that is excluding more people than you would think. You know? So you can actually do section two without design tables at all. So you know, if you're uncomfortable with them, don't worry about it. You know, configure feature will probably get you where you're going. And last section here is the, uh, is the assemblies portion. So this is, can you read uh, the prompt, uh, get, get them uh, assembled in the correct way? How well do you understand the mates? How efficient are you are with the mates? Because there's ways of putting things together that takes three mates, and there's other ways where you can just do it in one mate. That'll save you time on the exam. They're looking for that proficiency there. So it's kind of the same thing, but we're gonna be focusing on section one. So let's go ahead, we'll continue. All right, so what are some tips and tricks of the exam? All right, so design intent. It's basically defining how a model reacts to change. Honestly, I don't know why it even exists, to be honest with you. Everyone knows that if you work in an engineering design environment, you design a part once and it's perfect. It never has to be changed, ever. What's an engineering change notice? Everyone keeps yelling at me. <laughs> so of course, you know, we're in, a dynamic, we're in a dynamic environment all the time. We need to build our models such that they are what we call robust or very resistant to change that if you make one thing longer, you know, the part doesn't blow up on you. And that's the thing that costs time. You re it reduces productivity. So who here has taken SOLIDWORKS Essentials with a reseller, just out of curiosity? Okay, a couple of us? Definitely, if you have a chance there, even if you've been using SOLIDWORKS for a couple of years, you know, you'll get not only um, the nomenclature of things down, you know, what are things called, but you get tips and tricks there and you know how to do things the proper way. I was certified SOLIDWORKS expert. Uh, I was um, expert certified by the time I got to Design Point. They made me sit down in one of those. I took a lot out of it. So even after all, all, all that self-training, I had a lot, still had a lot of holes in my knowledge and that helped me patch that all up. So definitely recommend if you can make it out to one. But one of the things we stress there is uh, how do we expect this part to react to change? And then, of course, your question is going to be, well, what changes? It's like, okay, I can reasonably imagine this part getting bigger, but what if your boss comes in and is like, you know how that thing's a square? Now make it a circle. And then you're like, great, <laughs> might, might as well do this from scratch again because you didn't, you didn't see that coming. In the exam, you can see the future. So when you, see, when you get to the exam, you can actually look through all the questions before even drawing a single line. Do that. See the future. If you do that, you will see what changes are coming and you will know how to plan out your model. You're gonna use that to your advantage. So this is like tips of like how to take the exam rather than the content on it. It's like the SAT prep. So input, very important. There, when, when we get to the exam prompt, there's gonna, be a, uh, there's gonna be a bunch of letters with a bunch of numbers on it. And those letters will correspond to dimensions. And conveniently, it's these dimensions are the things that are gonna be changing. So what's better, you know, just uh, hard typing them in there and then when they change, you gotta go to every sketch and find them? Or we use some global variables. Who here has used global variables before? Yeah, pretty swell stuff, isn't it? You know, brings all the, all the important driving dimensions of our design in one place, makes them easy to change. We're gonna use this. Also very important, please, please, please assign the material to the part when you answer the question of how much it weighs. The SOLIDWORKS undefined material has a density. Therefore, it will give you a mass. This mass will not be correct. But we're better than that. We're, we are gonna be the certified people. We are smarter than the computer. And that's another thing of what it's testing here. So, Another thing we can do here, when we get the pr initial prompt, 
you know, just take a moment, you know, take a deep breath, and just kind of think about what kind of planes we can use, what initial profile we can use to not only uh, be efficient with our, our modeling, but you know, get as many uh, global variables and critical dimensions in at, the, in at the start, pretty much. The sooner we can take care of those, you know, the sooner we can you know, not worry about it. So who is it we have here? Oh, it's my good old friend. It's uh, Surface Phil. So Surface Phil is very happy to be here. Hi, good to see you again, buddy. They said I could give you a quiz. I am so honored. I'm going to be the best quiz giver ever. Wait, I'm, out of, I'm in a presentation at SolidWorks World? Hi, Mom. This little lost going to be a star. He's just excited to be here. All right, all right, all right, focus. So first question, what will be the ideal choice of profile to make this part? So there's three here. So you can see the blue is the part as seen from the top. The orange is the rectangle seen from the side. And then the pink is uh, the profile as seen from the front. So who says blue? Who says orange? Who says pink? Hey, I think that is a very good, very good choice. You're playing to the strength of Boss Extrude. Yeah, he's really happy. Wow, so you got that one quick. All right, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. All right, so orange, we have that one tab there. Blue, we have the part as seen from the top again. And then pink is that extrusion. So who says blue? Who says orange? And who says pink? Pink is another great, another great choice. It's, it's efficient because in the other profiles, while you can get that done, uh, having, a, in, having an extrusion starting from that pink sketch gets practically all the geometry in there minus the tabs. It's only a couple more steps after that. So that's the kind of efficiency that I'm talking about. So, oh, he's just so nice. You're amazing. We're going to be prof professionals, experts, maybe even masters. Okay, master is not a cert. At least I don't think so. But um, maybe, <laughs> maybe in the future, I'll talk to the certification team about that. But um, yeah, moving on here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of nothing. Hey, what's this? A note. Uh-oh. I see you have been training. Come meet me at Reunion Tower in Dallas, and we'll settle this once and for all. Oh, man, I'm not ready for this right now. I was not, I'm not done. Oh, I mean, we have Surface Phil here giving us a little, a little pep talk. I'm, I'm going to have to do the rest of this on the way over there. So um, first, let's get out of here, my tutu. And oh, hey, a cab. It says Dallas on it. And we're in Dallas. I wish my trip to Dallas was that quick, to be honest with you. And uh, here we are. So, okay, yeah, the, 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 one of the last things I want to tell you here is the general process. If you've been to Fundamentals 1, remember, there are three main stages of modeling a part. You know, first we want to create all the solid geometry, and um, we, we'll basically keep going until basically all the mass is there. Keep going. So why is everyone looking at me? Haven't they seen a Tetris part with a tutu walk down the street before? The next thing is that we want to remove all the material. So um, starting with all the extrusions and then going to all the cuts will prevent you, for the, for the most part, uh, from filling in holes by accident when you create more extrusion that are after cuts. Of course, it won't be like this all the time. Uh, but ideally, and if you don't have any, uh, anything else to go off of, uh, you can uh, j just go create all the material and then take it away. All right, so I see the little foot of uh, Reunion Tower there. So, um, excuse me, ma'am, I'm going to have to jump on your head to get on here. And go up here. And then lastly, remember to add all the applied features. So applied features typically are added at the end. You know, mileage may vary about this, but, you know, for the most part, it is add, subtract, modify. All right, so I think that's practically all I wanted to show you. So, uh, you know, let's get in there so if I can get, give it a good... Jump. All right, so we're in there. And let's see what we got. Ooh, this is ominous. Ominous. Uh, welcome, hero, to your greatest challenge. You will have 30 minutes to, uh, what are you wearing? <laughs> anyway, you have 30 minutes to complete my challenge. Oh, who am I? I'm the first section of the CSWP. Prepare yourself. All right, so now we're going to hop in to the uh, modeling exam. So I have. 30 minutes on the clock there, it's in seconds, but 
you know, we'll roll with that for right now. Up here, I'm gonna move to the computer and I open SOLIDWORKS and I have a sample exam prompt. So this is pretty close to, this is pretty close to how the exam looks like, nearly verbatim actually. So when you start a SOLIDWORKS exam, you know, I'll give you some information. Your exam is five questions. You can answer in any order. Remember that. Uh, use a summary screen to see all the questions you've answered. Uh, once you click end test, it's over. Sounds good. You'll have 30 minutes. Minimum passing score is 80. So I need to get four out of five to pass this particular exam. My proctor is SOLIDWORKS. I'm connected to the internet, so I'm good to go. So I'll do start examination. There we go. All right, and I'm in the first question already. Remember the first thing I told you to do. Know the future. So we can see that we have a particular part. Doesn't look too bad. You know, I'll look through some of these over here. Go to next question. Question two is actually exactly the same, except they change some of the variables that they define over on the left-hand side here. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. Question three. Again, it's actually exactly the same, except they change the global variables again. Question four. Okay, we're, we're getting a little bit of funkiness here. But nothing we can't handle, so a couple things change. And they actually circle the changes for you. So it looks like this chamfer was something else beforehand, but now it is uh, three millimeters and perhaps a new um, angle. So we'll keep, that, we'll keep that in mind. And then next question. It's the same as question four, except global variables change. All right, so now that we've seen the future a little bit, you know, let's go, let's check out the summary screen. So this summary screen is pretty helpful because you can actually hyperlink back to any question you want. So if you have a 20 question exam, you need to go back to question, you know, six. You don't have to like click, you know, back, 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 back. You just kind of click it here and you're there. Um, shows whether you've answered or not, you know, which is kind of untrue as of right now, but that's okay. But also shows the weight, the weighting of this, of each particular part. And this is gonna be very important to us because some questions are worth more than others. So in this particular example, they're all weighted identically. So I'll just start with the first one, but you know, what if that first one was just kind of a Jeopardy question? You know, just like, hey, what kind of drawing view is this? Gives you some multiple choice. The thing is, you wanna go for the big ones. You're not gonna be able to pass the exam until you complete some actual modeling challenges. And those are the things you wanna focus on. If you uh, uh, spend your time at the beginning uh, researching the answer to these Je Jeopardy questions, you're taking away time that you may need to finish the model at the very end. So use your time wisely. You can answer in any order you prefer. Remember that. But a lot of these are progressive. So I guess my only two choices are, you know, starting at question one or, que or question four, but, you know, one would be a little bit more logical. So I'll just click that. Hyperlinks me back here. All right, so... What's my time so far? Okay, spent a handful of seconds just talking to you. Haven't even modeled anything, but I'm not worried about it. So let's open up a new part. Uh, that works for me. And remember, you want to read the whole prompt. So it's not intense reading comprehension or anything like that, but you do have to read the words. I'm sorry. So we're going to pay attention to things like what's the unit system? Millimeters, gram, second. Make sure you take care of units right at the beginning. If you uh, skip this and you proceed with inches, it's a real pain to try and convert back into millimeters. It's a lot of backtracking. So make sure that that is done right up front. So material, 6061 alloy. I will assign that right now. So right click, edit material go to my aluminum alloys, and we are looking for 6061. Hello. Apply. <coughs> Close. Okay, and, and I'll just show you the density. They, they're not trying to trick you. They won't say aluminum uh, 6061, but has a different density than the standard SOLIDWORKS one. That would just be mean. So, you know, just assign the material and you'll be good. So all holes through unless otherwise shown. And now let's get to assigning some of my uh, my global variable. So I can actually do that up front for later reference. 
So I want to go to my equation folder. Who knows how to get there? So one way is tools, equations, but you know that's kind of a long way. Um, what I, how I like to personally set up my C to SolidWorks, if I right click on some empty air on the tree, go to hide show tree items, and I can actually set this equations folder from automatic to show. And what that changes is, so automatic means if there's an equation in there, the folder will be showing. If not, it will be hiding. I'm forcing it to show all the time. This is a system option. So once you do it once, it'll be uh, forever changed on your computer only. But you can see we now get this equations folder. You can right click, go to manage equations. You'll get into something like this. And now let's just slap in all the global variables. So add global variable. I will say A equals, let's see, 110. And I'm going to try not to fat finger this. B, 65. Hit tab a couple more times. We have C equals 40. We have D uh, equaling 25. We have E. 12, there we go. Um, F is a specification for a whole wizard, and we cannot actually put that into this equations manager. So I'll just skip on ahead. Derek, you had a question? Uh, I have a list of variables, so I'm just curious. When you're typing that in, you're doing A tab equals space one tab, right? Yeah, that, that's correct. So you, you may notice that it's putting in uh, the quotation marks in for me. So it, yeah, it does that uh, automatically. Though if you want to type those quotations um, yourself, you can you can, of course, do that. But um, yeah, you know, moving, moving on. OK, x is an actual equation. So we'll say x. And I could say, e well, I hit an equals and it gave me one, so I'll just delete one of them. I only need one equal sign. And first thing is c over 3. And the nice thing, if you specify that variable beforehand, I can mouse over to global variables and pick c here. So it populates in that box. Type over 3. Hit tab, and it actually crunches the math for you. So here you see what equation you type. Here you see what it evaluates to. And y equals, so it's a over 2 plus 5. So um, even without the parentheses, the uh, order of operations should work OK. But remember, remember, kids, practice safe math. If I see parentheses, I'm putting them in too. So <laughs> equals. Safe math, parentheses, global variables, a over 2 plus 5. And it crunches a number for me. So I'm just going to check really quickly one more time. So c over 3, a over 2 plus 5, 110, 65, 40, 25, and 12. <laughs> I would check at this point that I did not fat finger anything. You have, you have a question? Mm -hmm. And you can simply type in those values as different. Yep, that's, that's correct. I get it. Yeah, and it's just keeping all those variables all in one place because normally, you know, these dimensions will be split out through different sketches and stuff like that. Well, you wouldn't need a table, it's Excel or something. Exactly, yeah, you don't need a table. It's making it easy for you because not only is, you know, hunting down every sketch slower, but it invites mistakes too. You, you might forget one. So doing it this way is definitely the recommended way. So I'll just go ahead and hit OK. And of course, no geometry is created or anything like that. But you know, if I look through equations, you can see they're available to me here. So OK, what, what time, how much time do I have left? All right, so you know, a couple more minutes went by. No big deal still. So let's go, let's go through these and see what kind of profile I can do. So there, uh, we can draw a scene from the top. Actually, that one's pretty good. And, you know, that'll get you most of the things other than you know, a couple fillets here and there. Or you can draw it like that. But then I would need another extrude cut to get rid of this top bit. I think I'll go for this one over here. Also has a couple of global variables that it can insert. So let me just go into SOLIDWORKS, sketch on a front plane. I'll grab my line tool. And remember, just draw the general shape that you want. And you know you don't have to rush or anything. You know, just extra precision with your mouse clicks can get you extra relations <coughs> that you would other, otherwise have to add later. All right, so I have something like that. 
you know, it's looking so far so good. There are blue lines. Who here uses blue lines, blue sketches? Okay, <laughs> didn't think so. Blue, we don't want anything to be underdefined in our SOLIDWORKS geometry. That is most definitely an error and you will likely get it wrong. So do not leave the sketch until we have it fully defined. Smart dimension, and let's just go for this A value here. So if I click this line and place it down, we can actually link the global variable right here. So I'll type in the equal sign. So I say equals, and then this little flyout comes out and I can click A. You can also type it in manually. That's what I like to do a lot of the times. But if I hit OK, you see that um, it changed the value A, which is 110. But the important bit, you see this little red sigma dude, this funky E? You always want to see it there when you're, li when you're linking a global variable. If you do not see it there, you're in trouble. Usually the, the problem is you forgot to type the equal sign in. That's it. But you know, if you type in a global variable and you do not see that, go back and you know, see, see what's up with that. You know, so I'll go here, say equals C. And that time I just typed it in with quotations. Okay, my, uh, my sketch got short and squat. Okay, looks like the height of that is X, so that's gonna be this little line here. Say equals X, hit okay. And only one more blue line left to take, take over. Remember, if you don't know what you have to add, grab on something blue and start yanking it around. So clearly it's like the length here or like the offset here. We gotta find something to that extent. If I go here, we can see that that value appears to be D. Now be careful not to confuse it with this 30 because that's going to the end of this pocket. So we want the value for D. And as I'm going through this, I'm actually gonna throw more shortcuts and tips and tricks, you know, just slowly getting faster. So one of my favorite things, if you right click and drag, you will get this mouse gesture wheel. This is one of my favorite things in SOLIDWORKS and can lead to a very fast workflow. It is also completely customizable with up to 12 items on the wheel. But you gotta be really precise. You know, I find eight is a good balance. But even the out of the box one is pretty useful because I can right click, swipe up, and get my dimension tool, eliminating the time for mouse travel up to the actual button. So whenever I like to do that, I'll do it. So equals D, whoops, hit okay, and sigma comes up. We are fully defined, no blue lines, can exit the sketch, and, you know, constant cross-section, that looks, uh, it looks like fair game for an extrusion, so let's go to features, to my extrude, see my little preview here, and if I go over here, you can see the depth is set to B, so for blind, well, if I go down here, I can actually type in an equal sign and throw a global variable in there. Equals B. Check. All right, another thing is um, I need to have this be centered about the, about the origin. That, that would be ideal because that opens up things like mirrors and patterns and stuff like that without you know, worrying about it too much. So I'm just gonna change this from blind to mid-plane, just like that. And just like that, the origin is in the center. If I need to mirror, it's convenient. All right, hey, we have our first thing here. And usually when I get the first, um, first part built, I like to save at this point. No, go away. Save. <laughs> well, I don't even know how I did that. <laughs> All right, that's, uh, I don't really care where I put this. I'll just throw this in documents, make a new folder, test, go in there. I'll name it Q1 for question one. All right, so now if I know if SOLIDWORKS decides to act up, you know, I won't have to do all of that again. All right, how are we doing on time? All right, so I've about used half of my time up. I'm not even done with the first question, but as you'll see here, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. All right, so let's keep, keep on going. So I've pretty much extruded all the material I need. Now I can start taking things away. So, you know, let's go here, for example. I could do the pocket, but I'll do it just like that. Want to view normal two? Control eight is a pretty good way to do that. I use I use normal two most of the time because you can just select any face. 
and then get almost any orientation you want. So here's the thing. I'll go ahead and draw myself a little triangle like this to represent out the uh, cut material. And I need to mirror it to the other side. So let me get a center line. And I'll drag straight through the origin just like that. And just for funsies, I'll make it infinite length. A lot of drafters like to see that. You know, totally fine here. So now we want to use our mirror tool. And of course, I could go up to mirror entities and deal with this dialog. But I'll show you a little shortcut here. If I make a box selection like this, so you've selected a whole bunch of stuff and only one center line. If I do that and just click mirror entities, it automatically just does it for me. And again, that is any amount of lines you want, but one center line. It automatically intuits that as the mirror and will just do it for you. You know, it's one less click, but you know, that kind of stuff adds up if you can incorporate that into your natural workflow. But yeah, blue geometry. We gotta get it out of here. Smart dimension, that is going to be E, so equals E, like that. 30 degrees, I'll actually put it over here. So why am I putting it over here rather than over there? Well, putting dimensions exactly where they put it makes it easier to cross-check. So at the end of the exam, if you have some extra time, you can go, oh, E, have I considered that? Yeah, it's right here. 30 degrees, have I considered it? Yes, it's right here. Makes it easier to cross-check. And that fully defines the sketch. And that's pretty, pretty good. You can actually double-click on some air to exit the sketch, just like that. So that's one, one speed tip trick. Another one, who here uses the S key shortcut? Not enough hands. You need to use this. If I press S on my uh, key, uh, keyboard, it will bring up this shortcut bar that has the most commonly used features right to your mouse cursor. This is also completely customizable. So if you find that you're using move copy bodies a lot, you can throw it in here and just have quick access to it. So I hit X, uh, S, excuse me, S is in snake pretty much. I can go here and hit extruded cut. All right, so I have, yes, go ahead. Uh, Yes, it does, and it actually brings uh, um, sketch-specific items to your cursor. And I, uh, yeah, I'll show I'll show that next sketch here. Good, good call. All right, so we have this um, uh, this cut happening. Let's program some intelligence in there. Remember, they're testing your workflow. They're testing how robust you're making this model. So instead of having it blind some distance, you know, let's have it go through all or something like that. So I could go over to the left-hand side there, but that's way too long for my mouse to go to. So did you know that if you right-click some air, you can actually access the end conditions of both directions from this menu? So I can go through here, say through all, and it changes it without me having to mouse all the way over there. And you see my cursor right now, maybe a little difficult to see, but I have like a little mouse icon next to it with a little green check on the right-click. That means if I right-click right now, it will accept the feature. Another speed tip. Right click, and it accepts it for me. Pretty cool, right? All right, doing pretty, doing pretty well. Okay, so we're running a little low on time here. So let's see what we can do to pick up the pace. All right, so let's uh, tackle this uh, pocket here. So I'll go ahead and sketch on this uh, plane, just like that. And I can just get myself a rectangle. I need to center it up, so do it any way you like, really. But I'll just do select midpoint with the origin. You want to relate to the origin as much as possible. Um, you cannot delete the origin, as you probably are aware. And that makes your parts more robust. If you put it to an edge, you might have to fill it later on. And that might lead to errors that you have to fix. All right, so I put a dimension there. So 30. So here's, a, here's another thing. It's going to be really tempting to want to dimension this line. I would refrain from doing that because it would require some basic math to actually figure out what that, uh, uh, what that length actually is. And if I know anything, tests do weird stuff to the way you can process basic, basic math. Avoid it. So if it says 30 from this edge, I will give it 30 from this edge. 30. That sketch is fully defined. You know, we're doing, doing pretty good here. But you can see that there's some fillets here. So why don't I throw that in right now? You know, if I go to my sketch fillet tool, I can do that right now. 
I would refrain from doing that, at least in the test taking environment. Why is that? Well, if you put the sketch fillets in here, you have no way to separate them other than going back and manually editing, editing the sketch. It takes too much time. Another thing, you know, consider the two dimensions that I have here and all the green boxes. Those are all the dimensions and relations that constrain the sketch. You might find, find yourself in this situation where you overdefine a sketch and you have to figure out what's wrong. Well, what's easier to uh, troubleshoot? This or, if I get that, yeah, a little angry, but whatever, or that. You know, look how, many, how much more green boxes came up. And that's stuff you have to sift through to try, to try and figure out what's wrong. Keep your sketches as simple as possible. You know, it'll help you when you're under pressure like that. But, you know, I don't want that, so I just hit Control Z to undo that. I'll get out of the sketch. And I'll show you another cool trick. If I click on the sketch here, if you have 3D, uh, 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 if you have a 3D Connect on, um, you'll get this uh, little uh, instant 3D. Excuse me. If you have instant 3D on, you'll get this little arrow. If I grab this little arrow and drag it down, it automatically gets that sketch and makes a cut extrude. If you go the other way, it makes a boss extrude. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I'll just go in there. So it's hard to nail down the value. So remember to go back, double click the depth, and then nail it down. So I think they give it to me in this view, two, two, make sure that's rebuilt. And now we have our pocket there. Oh, that, that's, the, that's the rebuild icon. So um, I, I did that because um, when you change things through uh, 3D, um, uh, instant 3D, you, it does not do the rebuild operation just in case you want to do some extra stuff. So that's, that's a consideration. If you do do it that way, remember to hit rebuild. Although, you know, next feature you'll do will rebuild the model. All right, so how, how are we doing here? All right, run, running low, running low. All right, so pressure's really on. Got to gotta pick, pick it up here. So let's tackle the, the counterbores here. And so I'll get my whole wizard. Um, PDM, I don't care about you, so I'll just hit no, just as long as we, as we get in here. All right, so metric counterbore. So counterbore, metric, hex bolt, ANSI 18B.2.3.5. All right, got it, this one. Um, M10, doink, fit, close, boop. All right, notice it gives us some specific specific values for the sizing of it. I'm going to hit show custom sizing and make sure that matches up. And it does not. So I'll go ahead and rectify that right now. So that needs to be 11, that needs to be 22, and that needs to be 3. Yes? Uh, um, I believe, yeah, I believe, yeah, close does, close does change these values. So I guess it's a little redundant in this. <laughs> in this uh, particular exercise. But the important thing, at least, you know, make sure that those three values match up. That's a good, good point. Um, but anyway, I'll go to positions. Um, I can avoid hitting 3D sketch because both of my items just need to go right here. Let me uh, get that all centered up like that. Box select all of that stuff and that. And I can say you're, you all are gonna be horizontal get my smart dimension from my right click wheel, say that is 35, and then that is equal to y. y indeed. Fully defined, we can leave now. All right, almost done with the first model here. Now we just need to add a couple of fillets. So remember we're on stage three, apply, add the applied features. So technically, this fillet over here is five. These are also five. It's best that, even though they're the same size, to keep them separate because they're fundamentally two different design elements. And you might need to switch them, switch their places around. So I'll actually just do these ones first. And I'd like to see a preview just to know everything is happy. Like that. Change that value to five. That is looking pretty good. All right, if you hit the enter key, it will bring up the last use command. Pretty neat. 
And the fillet key has me uh, fillet uh, uh, tool has memory, so I don't have to type in five again. I can just hit check mark and get on with my life. And uh, I think basically the last thing here may be the chamfer. Five by 45, so um, let's go ahead, chamfer, I'll change to five, click this, oops, click the edge, there we go, and you see it propagates all the way through, like that, hit OK, and I think that's what, it, what I need for right now. Ooh, <laughs> that, that's getting close. But um, at any rate, I'll go to evaluate, mass properties, hey, 330.34, I have it right there. The tolerance of how much it can be off is probably less than a hundredth of a gram. So if you're off by a handful of grams, you may have forgotten a fillet somewhere. That's usually indicative of some design error. If you, if you face something like that, grab the measure tool and start poking around. See, what, see, what's, see what's up. But I'll just uh, select that, hit next. Quickly, now I will save the part and do a save as. So I'll do file. Save as, Q2, Oop. just like that. And then now, let's just change all of my values. So equations, manage equations, 110 stays the same. Changes to 50, keep going. 25, keep going. D equals 15, E equals five. Uh, F, I will make sure that, that nothing has changed with that. Okay, no, that's all the same. C is still, y, X is still C over three, A over two plus five. That's it. Part changes, mass properties, and we have a value of 131.38 grams. Next question. So that actually went pretty quick now. So I need to save as again. A quick way of doing this, let's use it the window shortcut way. I'll do Alt F. So if I do Alt F, that opens up the file menu. And you notice how Save As has a little A underline there? That means if you hit the A key, it'll bring you to this option. So watch this. If I do Alt F A, Save As. Check that out. Q3, Enter. All right. Holding down Alt F and A. Oh, great, great question. Yeah, I'm, I'm press, pressing them distinctly. So Alt F A. So pressing Alt once activates the little underlines under all the menus. Might be difficult to see here. Nope, no sir. Yep, Alt, F, A. All distinct. Great question. All right, but at any rate, rate question three. So let's uh, equations manage equations. Quickly now, there's no time to waste. 200, make sure I don't fat finger anything. 90, 80, D is 25, so see how much faster this is than hunting down individual sketches? And just make sure that nothing else changes. No, they don't, no, they don't. Hit OK. All right, part rebuilds, mass properties, 1500, oop, 1520.2, uh, oop, 1520, uh, 20 point, there we go, not used to this computer, 0.22, there we are. Next question. So we're on question four, and I have a hunch that I may be out of time, <laughs> 70 seconds. So that's, so that's why, you know, prioritize. You know, I've been, of course, taking questions the, the whole time, but, you know, if you've been spending the time uh, practicing Jeopardy here, you know, this final minute here becomes a lot more stressful. Don't think I'll quite make it, but maybe I can if I can try and model this. It's going to be close, so Alt-F-A. Q4, enter. So let's go change the equations. Remember, if things change back, it's best to change all of these first. So 110, back to 65. C is 40. D is 25. E is 12. And, ooh, note, the equation for Y has changed. Now it's plus 10. So remember, read the words. Hit OK. All right, so that's our part, but looking at this new thing here. All right, handful of different changes here. 
So it looks like we have a tab here, we have a cutout, we have the slot instead of the whole wizard holes, and we got this little notch back here. It circles any changes, so it's not trying to trick you. You know, it's trying to be as clear as it can with the design changes that you have to perform. So let's do a couple of, the, of these. All right, so um, editing a model. How do we do that? Do we start at the very end? No, we're just going to take our time machine, just head on back over here to the first feature and see if anything needs to change at this point. Okay, that looks pretty good. And the first cut extrude, that can stay as well. Well, actually, you know, uh, I almost forgot. It actually adds material with that little tab. And just keeping with my best practice, I'll actually add that little trapezoid tab at this, at this state, remember, uh, model all solids, then cut, then apply. All right, so I'll go sketch on this plane, you know, get my line tool, and just do a couple of these, like that. And I can use my box selections to help me out. Can make those two lines equal to each other, and we should have a little mechanism like this. I always like to uh, test it out to see if it's reacting just the way that I want. Looks like it's working out pretty well for us though. Okay, so the angle there is 30 degrees. So I'll do that here, 30. And I think I saw the height. Yep, there, is, there it is, 10. Like that. You know, just using my shortcuts for speed. And, you know, just to show, answer the other gentleman's question, if I hit S here, you see it brings up sketch specific things to my, to my cursor. So it's also context specific. You can actually click this button to get out of the sketch too. Yeah, but that looks, uh, looks pretty good. I'll hit S and then extrude. That is uh, far too thick. So I will take, take that down to five. And it's going the wrong way. Watch out for that because, um, you know, I drew normal to this plane. You know, we got to flip it the other way. It wants to go away from that plane. So watch out for things like that. Hit OK. OK, that looks uh, pretty good here. You know, what else can we do? And I think that's all, this, all the material that I have to add. Now we can focus on the cuts. You know, I can uh, roll down here. That is exactly the same, so I'll leave it just like that. But for these little cuts over here, you know, I'll actually start that at the top plane and then cut extrude upwards. Um, sketching on the elementary planes is the, one of the most robust things you can do. Just like the origin, you cannot delete the top plane until you'll never have an error related to that. You know, just get myself a rectangle there. And that should be seven, 10. And I bet I'm out of time for, for this thing at least. You know, I still have a couple minutes left for the presentation, so I guess I could have been a little bit faster. That, that goes with practice and optimizing your, uh, uh, optimizing your um, uh, shortcut set and stuff like that. That's the, another important thing. Don't go into a, a certification exam with a fresh set of, fresh set of settings. Be used to them. But you know, I still have a couple minutes left in the presentation, so I'm gonna see this thing through to the end here. So, all right, so I have that. I'd like to mirror it over to the other side, so I'll use my same technique. I'll just leave this uh, sketch line like that, grab all the things, mirror entities, brings it to the other side. You have a, you have a question? Oh. That is a good question. So the gentleman asks, is there a certification for instructors? Yes, there is. The thing is, it's only available to SOLIDWORKS resellers because the instructor certification is SOLIDWORKS' way for you know, visiting a particular reseller and say that, that the training that they're delivering is up to their standards. So for example, I have it because I work with Design Point. But, um, so yeah, it exists, but only for resellers. All right, yeah, that's a good one though. All right, so going to this over here, I'll hit S for extra speed. You know, through all, change the directions, 
hit OK from the right click menu, get something like that. All right, so now I just have to deal with um, that, that cutout there. So I may have to, you may have to do that. So you can see it's an offset of that fillet, so I need to move that fillet. So you see fillet one. I'll just move that above so that when I roll back, so yeah, I think I'll just leave this, the, the, the fourth question, because then I just want to make some closing remarks. But you know, something like this, I'll sketch on this plane, and now I can do, um, now I can do an offset entities of four and reverse the direction. That gets us pretty close to what we need. I'll delete that offset relation. Notice it didn't turn blue. Remember, we're smarter than the computer. If we yank this thing until it breaks, you can see that it moves. So that's part of the understanding that goes on here. So I'll take that and make that collinear with the edge here. Get out of that. S key again, extrude cut. And now I need it to be flush to the surface. I'll, sh I'll give you another t tip for some speed here. I could go to the left, say, say um, up to surface, and then click the surface. But did you know, if you just double click on a surface, it does that for you. So d double click, it sets it to up to surface, and then throws that face in there for you. So less clicks, even better, right? Uh, for, for the S, no, you can't change the end condition with S. You can change it in the right click menu. Now, if you do the regular right click. Yeah, so I don't need the counter bores anymore. So you can see they're acting a little bit strangely. I'll just suppress that and we'll add this slot. All right, so drawing a tab like that can be done with using only the line tool. Crazy, you say. How do you get a curve out of a, out of a line tool? Well, I'll show you, just like this. I draw the line just like that, and if I take my line, back it up into the point, and then fly on out, it transforms into an arc, magically. Can keep going. Could see I drew that tab without having to even switch my sketch tool, which is pretty nice. You know, I'll just, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just, you just move your mouse back into the point and then you just kind of, you know, move your mouse out of it. Yeah, so, you know, it, it is, yeah, so it is like a, definitely a mouse control thing. So if you're good with that, you know, that works out pretty well. Or I will show you that if you hit the A key on your keyboard, you know, if you have like shaky hands a little bit, like me a little bit because I'm presenting up here. But um, yeah, if, if I hit the A key, it actually transforms that for you. So, so that's another, another thing that may be pretty helpful. Yeah, but at any rate, you know, a couple more dimensions to add. You know, and then we'll just, you know, close off here. So equals Y, remember the Dimension, 15. All right, and it looks like I'm getting towards the end here, so let me see if I can finish this off. Through all, right click. See that thing got, got added there. Now I'll roll all the way down. So this, so no errors appear in the tree, but this chamfer is acting weirdly. You know, since the edge got completely broken, it only appears on one edge now. That is part of being SolidWorks certified, is noticing the design errors like this. Not the rebuild errors, but the design errors. So I'll edit that feature, change that to three, at 30 degrees, whoops, not zero, zero degrees, that wouldn't work very well. There it is. And I'll do full preview, and if I look at as to the side, the long edge is towards the top. And if you look here, the short edge is towards the top. If I hit this little pink arrow, go back to edge one, pink arrow, you can actually flip the sense of the chamfers, like that. And the very last thing is add fillets. And here's my last speed tip. If I, um, if I go get my fillet tool, which actually can be found here, uh, remember your uh, selection uh, toolbar. So usually show selection toolbar, is enabled. If I click on an edge, who's seen this thing before that appears next to your mouse? 
does it startle anyone? And you just like shake your mouse to get it out of the way. This isn't my way. Well, if you hover over it, it actually tries to guess what your scope is. So those pink edges, if I click that, will add those edges in there. So that's too much. Hey, that looks like what I'm looking for. So it's even though it's just one edge, makes it easier to select. But you could see I can select a bunch of edges if I want to. But in this internal to feature works pretty well. Change that to three. And I think that's it. Remember to hit save. I'll go to uh, my evaluate tab and go to mass properties. 287.32, hooray. And uh, for right now, so the last question is just changing the global variables. I'm gonna skip that so I can make my closing remarks. You, I see people clapping over there. But if I go end examin uh, examination, hey, it passed 100%, even though that's, I missed the question, that's technically not true, but I guess it would still pass, you know, four out of five. But anyway, at any rate, you know, let's go back here. You know, lot, lots of questions, which is really good. You know, I'll have cards available if you have any additional questions for me, r regardless of, um, you know, test taking techniques or other information. But, you know, just to defeat him, I'm going to jump on his head. And, you know, when you get past a certification, you get a lovely little certificate like that that has a specific code. You see, this is one of my certifications. And you can look up that code, an employer can, and verify that it's real. You can't be a fake SOLIDWORKS expert. The code can be verified. So that's another good thing. But, that yeah. for all certifications? All certifications got a code. You cannot, you cannot forge one. What about on the one where it that Yeah, uh, in the uh, certification directory, I believe associates do appear there. Yeah, but you know, a couple final remarks. Um, this presentation was ad adapted from one given to me by Rachel Di Diane York. If you ever see her around, she's like one of the most awesome people you will ever meet. She's just crazy about the users. You know, that's her Twitter handle. You can tell her how I did. I'm like, well, that was really weird. I don't know about that. But, you know, other than that, um, I programmed this game and, you know, made all the art. Um, I'm actually recording this live. So, um, you know, this will be posted to the SOLIDWORKS website, but I wanted to make this more readily available to all users that could not make it here. So my YouTube channel, you can search SOLIDWORKS Nerd and find me on Instagram and Twitter, at SOLIDWORKS Nerd. Tell me how I did. And other than that, oh yeah, I'm gonna post a, uh, uh, a glitches and tips uh, and uh, behind the scenes on YouTube. So if you're wondering how this came to be, you know, look forward to that as well. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, and please uh, remember to fill out the session survey. So this is actually my first time presenting at SOLIDWORKS World, so I would love to hear your feedback. There's always room for improvement. So if you would do that, that would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much.